We're here at ITU Telecom World 2012, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Ali Jazeri, who is Head of Innovation at the World Intellectual Property Organization. Dr. Jazeri, thank you very much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. I'd like to start off by talking about the incredible transformation of ICTs and what you think are the principal opportunities arising from this transformation. I believe that uh, opportunities that are arising are tremendous. And in fact, uh, we're here in Dubai today, and in fact, Dubai is itself uh, the product of and the result of such a huge transformation in the uh, information and the communication technology sector. Why Dubai? Because itself is um, a result of this uh, global uh, uh, imaging, this uh, uh, aer aerial vision that uh, uh, the uh, city has been uh, transforming from. And in fact, the satellite imagery that uh, has inspired the transformation of uh, uh, islands such as Palm Jumeirah, Palm Jamal Ali, and Palm Daira were it themselves the result of uh, Google Earth and uh, the uh, transformation that uh, has resulted from that. In addition to that, we saw also the, uh, the world within the world in a, in a, in a way. And in, in a sense, it is the result, in fact, of second life. Second life itself is about creating an environment where people can uh, have a, a, a life that's parallel to their first life quote-unquote, and in fact the world itself is that kind of uh, imagination of where a world can be parallel to the real world in which we live in. Well, okay, so we can build dimensions that can be seen from space, we can live in other dimensions. What are the major challenges in this inc incredibly transformative world? The great challenges is that man himself is going to change. Here in, in Dubai it used to be a desert and you, we had nomads in the desert uh, walking. Today what we are seeing is that we have the uh, arising of new kinds of men. This global nomad where Dubai itself is a cosmopolitan city where you have people from all around the, the world that are buying apartments in, uh, in Dubai, in Palm, uh, Palm uh, Jumeirah, Palm uh, J Jabal Ali. So in a way, it is uh, this uh, way of creating an environment where you could be here, but then in the same time at another place around the world in the same time. And what opportunities are, are arising because of this? The opportunities is that, of course, you have this high-speed hyper-connectivity that's all around. And in fact, what we call ubiquitous connectivity. And in a way, this uh, is uh, the result of all the smartphones, the, uh, the tablets, the uh, e-books, and the, uh, the gaming devices, and the laptops that uh, we work with on a daily basis. And in fact, these kinds of instruments are becoming so powerful that David Tenenhaus, who used to be the, uh, the vice president of Intel, used to say that little by little, these devices are reading uh, data from the environment and uh, uh, having this data available to us for use. So in a way, we're not needed in the data input anymore, and we're becoming little by little the chauffeurs of the smart devices that we're carrying around ourselves on a daily basis. I was going to ask you, what expectations can we have for the future then? So the expectations is that indeed we're going to be more and more hyper-connected and it means that our lives is, are going to change. For example, if you're going to meet somebody, you don't give an address that that person is going to come and meet you at, rather you give them the GPS coordinates that a person can use in his smartphone to come and meet you at the given place at the given time. So that is the kind of uh, transformative uh, changes that uh, will arise very soon. And in terms of where we are now, ITU Telecom World 2012, why is this event important and uh, what uh, message would you like to convey to our uniquely influential audience here? 
especially I would like to convey that uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization is um, uh, defining this as open innovation where, or networked innovation. And in the spirit of networked innovation, what it means is that it is based on the osmosis and reverse osmosis of knowledge across the interface that separates an environment or a corporation and, uh, and the world surrounding it. So in a way, osmosis meaning this uh, flow of knowledge that can be a flow from inside an organization to outside, as well as the flow from, of knowledge from outside to inside an organization. So what that means is that today in the context of open innovation, you have the possibility of having uh, organizations or entities that collaborate with each other. So rather than reinvent the wheel, if a company across the street has potential for uh, bringing you some ideas or a part of the product that you need in your product uh, line, then why not uh, licensing this product and then putting it into your own product uh, or if some products are not central to your business strategy, why not license out that particular product? So in that context, what we're seeing today is that we're having a new kind of global innovation grid. And this global innovation grid is extremely powerful. Why is it powerful? The reason is that when you have a surplus of ideas, then this global innovation grid allows for people to come and take this, uh, uh, these ideas. And in the same time, when you need some ideas, this global innovation grid can provide these ideas that you're looking for. So in a way, this will connect today people from around the world that have particular skills in a particular area and can create a particular solution that you're looking for, whether it is in uh, climate change, whether it is in sustainable energy or any other uh, area. So in a way, this will be extremely powerful for building solutions on a networked basis. And this is the reason also of the evolution of innovation Innovation used to be the work of individuals in the 19th century and beginning of 20th century, the times of Edison. In the late 20th century, innovation was the work of teams. You had these mega large teams uh, in uh, large companies like Lucent Technologies, Bell Labs, IBM, DuPont, and so on. Today, in the 21st century, we're seeing the evolution of innovation towards networked innovation or towards open innovation where you have this ability to connect. And thanks to the ICT revolution, you're able now to connect people from around the world. And today, what matters is not what you know. Today, what matters is to know who knows how. And this is why it's important, thanks to the information and communication technologies, to be able to connect with these smartest people around the world. You've given us a fascinating insight into the ICT sector. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much.